Hello everyone, thank you so much for attending today's webcast on protecting Office 365. Before we get started, please be reminded that this session is recorded and you'll be receiving a copy of the recording at the end of the presentation. If you have any questions, please feel free to type them in the questions box and they'll be addressed after the session. At this time, I'd like to pass this to Ryan. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Outsource Solutions Group Educational Webinar Series. This is a live webinar series that focuses on sharing industry trends, best practices, helpful business tips, and valuable partner training for small to mid-sized businesses. My name is Ryan Basic. I'm the marketing coordinator here at Outsource Solutions Group, and I am also joined by our senior sales engineer, Nathan Preston. Uh, today's webinar on protecting Office 365 will be presented by Barracuda. Um, it's important to understand how we can provide multi-layer security, backup, archiving, and e-discovery e for Office 365. So if you're thinking about switching to Office 365 or are currently using it, this webinar will prove useful for you. We anticipate the session to last for about 30 to 40 minutes, and then we will open it up for questions. And please know that we'll be holding another educational webinar next month, so keep an eye out for that announcement from us on our website and emails. So now let's get started with today's session, and I will hand the floor over to Mike Parkin of Barracuda. Mike? Thanks, Ryan. I'm Mike Parkin. I'm a technical marketing engineer here at Barracuda Networks, and I'm going to be taking you through protecting Office 365, adding some layers of defense and depth uh, using Barracuda products. A little bit of background, I'm a former penetration tester. I used to break into banks for a living. If you ever seen the movie Sneakers, that's what I used to do. Um, I've been in security operations, I've been in product management, and I've been a technical marketing engineer where I'm primarily providing education for a number of years now. So without any uh, further delay, let me get started here. So all of you, I'm sure, are familiar with you know Office 365 and moving to the cloud. It's been a big thing. Uh, Microsoft introduced Office 365 in 2011, and since then they really become kind of the 800-pound gorilla of the market. They you know they have a great product. It's a, you know a great platform. A lot of people have moved there. I'm sure some of you are already there. Um, some of you are planning on moving in the near future. And, you know, the reality is it, it's a good reason. There's a lot of people there. But the reason the question is, why are people actually going? What's the, what's the value that Microsoft has added here? What is driving people to the cloud? And the answer to that is multiple levels. Um, Office 365 can actually be quite cost effective. You know, it's, you're buying it per user license rather than per workstation. You're not having to maintain it locally. You're not having to update everything. Um, it's eminently scalable. I actually use a very small instance myself for testing here at Barracuda. And um, it's just a couple of users. But you can go to 100,000 user uh, operations. I was just watching a presentation that Microsoft gave, and they've got a, they were talking about General Electric, and they've got 100, 180,000, 200,000 users, and they're going to go to a full 300,000 users. So they scale tremendously. Um, management is simplified. You pretty much go through one interface to do all of your management. And you can go cross-platform. There are a lot of different platforms you can use it on. If you want, if you're willing to use uh, on you know, the, the web versions, you can use it on a Linux box or BSD. Some of the more obscure operating systems, I can use it on Android. There's versions of all the Office products for Mac. So if you're an Apple user, you can use, you know, you can use Word, you can use Excel. And their product, in some cases, it's funny, in some cases, the products are actually better on the Mac than they are on a Windows PC. Um, but it's, it's, it's cross-platform. It's very versatile. There's a lot of good reasons for an organization to move to Office 365. But what about security? You know, what, what are they doing to secure everything? And they've really done a world-class job of securing the infrastructure that Office 365 is built on, uh, the Azure Cloud. I, if you've ever seen some of their videos, they, they actually show some, and they're, they're tremendous. They do a beautiful job of it. Um, as I mentioned, I worked in a penetration tester, and I worked for the Federal Reserve. So I've actually seen some of their facilities, and the only real difference is that the Fed has guys with guns protecting their facilities, and Microsoft doesn't. Um, but the reality is the way they do things are very impressive. I mean, i got to admit, physical security, they're really cool. But the question is, what are they doing? That's for them, right? Their, their own infrastructure. What are they doing to protect you as a user? So 
as a user, um, as somebody using Office 365, there's two different components they include. They include Exchange Online Protection, which is freely included with every level of Office 365 from their, from their absolute minimum up through their premier E5. Um, and then they af, add a advanced threat protection. An ATP is an add-on service that you pay for per user. So you're adding it as an each additional user adds additional cost and that adds additional capability. And they're born kind of out of two different two different tiers, two different needs. So EOP to start with is providing your spam filtering, um, which is not one of their highest highest strengths. Uh, provides your antivirus and anti malware. So they're using the same engine they use in Windows Defender and then signature base to see, you know, we've identified this before, no problem, we're going to block it. ATP, on the next stage, includes their advanced threat protection. It's basically there to stop your more advanced threats. This is for your zero days. This is for the ones that they may never have seen before. So where they're adding additional layers of capability. Um, to partially justify the extra cost, but partially give you protection you wouldn't otherwise have. And this is where they add some level of link protection to it, which does actually help. Um, if you're a full Windows Enterprise shop, there's um, integration between the Windows OS and this and everything else. It's actually pretty cool. But that's only at the very highest level. That's only where you've gone full-blown Windows Enterprise, you've got the maxed out um, E5, you've got all the options, you're wanting Windows 10 Enterprise, you're managing everything. So that's where all of that comes together. So what's missing, right? They It really looks like they provide everything you need, but the real question is, do they actually provide everything you need? They do provide a lot of powerful tools, but there's also a few challenges. So let me let me dig into that a little bit more. Let me let me show you some of the challenges that you're facing. Um, it really you'd think that they have everything, right? They've got they offer spam filtering, they offer basic anti malware. You can go and get the ATP and get their their defense in depth. Sounds like it everything. So the real question is why would you need anything else? And that's a good question. Why would you need anything else? Well, there are reasons to have additional layers of defense. So from a security best practices standpoint, defense in depth is the way to go. Anyone who's in the industry, anyone who's a security professional will tell you, you want to add layers. Um, having been in penetration testing, I can, I can tell you from experience, there have been times where I was able to uh, breach onto a, a person's system I now had access to their, their box, but I couldn't leverage that any further because there were other layers of defense that were keeping me from getting out or keeping me from getting into other systems. So it's those layers of defense that really make it, make it a, a truly secure. Going with multiple vendors is... People discuss that it goes both ways. Um, I'm of the opinion that going with multiple vendors is actually a good thing. Not a whole, not different vendor for every piece, but it does give you the ability. If you've got a single vendor, you only have one person to blame, right? You only have one bill to pay. You only have one person to blame, but you also only have one mindset. And there's the way a given vendor will choose to do things. So if you go with different vendors, you have the ability to leverage different thinking. Um, you know, our friends up in, our friends up in Redmond think about things differently, approach things differently than we do here in Campbell. So there's advantages to having the different mindsets, and one of the realities is, is that different approaches are stronger against some things than they are against others. Um, we understand a problem differently than they do. We defend. You know, we focus on different things. So together with multiple vendor approach, you end up with the ability to any possible weakness in one, you know, in one group solution is probably going to be compensated for by the other. So that's a good advantage, which leads into the multiple defensive techniques. Um, we have different approaches to doing things. 
how we set up a sandbox is going to be different than how they set up a sandbox. How we look for spam, you know, what criteria we use. There's going to be commonality, but there's certain criteria that are going to be different. So that's an advantage there. The other thing, and particularly when you're dealing with um, Microsoft or any, any vendor, but Microsoft in particular, Microsoft is the 800-pound gorilla, right? They more desktop computers are running Microsoft Windows than anything else in the world right now. Um, they're the target. They are what people are going after. If I'm trying to get email spam through or malware through, I'm testing my malware against Microsoft, but I'm also testing my spam against Office 365 because they're where so many of them are, are ending up. Um, in the email realm, the two people I'm going to test against are um, Microsoft and Google because they're really the two biggest email clients out there, platforms that people are going with. So an attack that's specifically designed to go against Microsoft may have flaws that another vendor would find specifically because they went after Microsoft. They went after Microsoft's weaknesses. So are there any challenges, you know, even without talking about defense in depth, are there any other security challenges that people might encounter when you're using Office 365? And there are a few. Um, I mentioned they have a, an integrated user interface, and they do. You know, Office 365, if you're using it, I'm sure you're familiar with it. Um, the problem is there are so many different functions available that you may actually have trouble finding the function you're actually looking for, right? I'm sure some of you have dealt with it, where you're trying to find a setting and you've got to dig, you know, three or four layers deep to find it. Um, Microsoft has a lot of resources dedicated to spam filtering, and as anyone who has ever checked their junk mail filter knows, they only do an okay job of it. Um, and the other thing is a lot of that spam stuff ultimately gets delivered. It ends up in your junk inbox, right? It's come into your organization. So it may have been classified as spam and shoved off the junk, but you still got it. Right, it didn't just get blocked and and dropped at the door. You can auto delete. You can configure to auto delete and stuff. You can go through and delete it, but you know you're still having to get these emails. They're coming into your system. Um, their advanced threat protection capability is really cool, but at the same time, the way they have it configured, it can actually add considerable delay. It's usually not that long. It's usually you know five to seven minutes, but people have encountered well over you know, 15, 20, 30 minute delays while email is being processed or file is being processed. Uh, they have a dynamic delivery feature which you'd get the email and the email would say, you have a file attachment that's currently being processed. We will let you know when it's done. And you end up waiting half an hour, um, which is, you know, it's there, but it's still, it can take time. And that's something that can be a challenge, and everything that goes through ATP has that. And again, as I mentioned before, they are the 800-pound gorilla. They are the target that everybody is testing against. Right? It's trivial to go out and get an Office 365 account. You buy a domain, you get an account, and you get one or two users on it. You get the ATP subscription, and you throw malware at it and see what gets through, see what doesn't get through. And now you're testing their filters on a live account, and they don't really know. It's, you know, they can't tell that it's being used maliciously. It's just an email address on their system, and it's getting spam, and getting malwares coming through. When you get things through, the spam gets through. You know you got your spam written correctly. And when the malware gets through, you know you're bypassing their ATP. And we haven't even talked about yet um, the offsite backup capability. Microsoft has, you know, multiply redundant servers, as I mentioned, their infrastructure. Uh, you'll probably never lose a file due to a hardware failure if you're in Office 365. That's one of their advantages. But there's no telling when someone might maliciously or 
accidentally delete files, delete directories, remove things from OneDrive or SharePoint in a way that you can't get them back. And that can happen um, for compliance purposes. Okay, if Sorbanes Oxley, any HIPAA, any one of a number of different capabilities where you actually have regulatory compliance that you need to worry about, where you need to have archives of your email. Microsoft is capable of archiving the email, but only after starting a litigation hold. So if you trust your users, which we hope you do, um, or you hope your users are trustworthy, you're not going to put a litigation hold in your entire user base, right? That's not practical. What a journaled archive does is a journaled archive lets things go off site and be stored in such a way that users can still search through them and look through them and find things that they may have deleted from their inbox, but they can't touch it. They can't damage it. They can't delete it. And for regulatory compliance, that's kind of a must. So in what we've found so far, right, there's a few pieces that are missing from the puzzle. Um, there is more to Office 365 security than meets the eye. There really is. And it takes more than the obvious pieces to complete this picture. And Barracuda is here, and our partners are here, to help you fill in those gaps. So Barracuda takes a three-step approach to defense, to, to securing your environment. The first step being detect. Um, and detection for us isn't this isn't an intrusion to, to protection. This is, you know isn't looking for the hackers on your network right now. This is really looking for latent threats, things that may already exist, things that are already in your network, have gotten in malicious emails, things like that. That's what we're talking about here for detection. The next step is prevention. Prevention is where the core of essentials is. This is where we're stopping malicious emails. We're stopping phishing. We're stopping spear phishing. We're stopping spam. We're stopping malware from getting in, ransomware from getting in. And then finally, recovery. Um, I'll come right out and say it. Anybody who tells you their solution is 100% effective all the time is lying to you. <laughs> okay. I will not make that claim about us. I will say we are very good, but I can't claim that we are 100% effective all the time. No one can. You know, it's a fact, right? Which means things occasionally are going to happen. You have to assume they may, may happen. You have to be prepared in case they do, and that's where recovery comes in. Recovery is the back, you know, cloud cloud backup that lets you recover in case of a ransomware attack or a malicious deletion, disaster recovery kind of thing. And you can actually kind of include um, email archiving in here as well. If you've got a case where you have a user, not even, not even for a legal case, but you've got someone who has gone through and deleted a bunch of emails, right? They've left, or as part of your own process, you've deleted a bunch of emails from a user because they're being able to left the company, but it turns out there was some information, some sales information, some information, conversations that were happening that weren't anywhere else. Your email archive can help you recover from that. Ah, give me a moment to uh, take a quick drink. I get some water and here we go. So and we're, we're really uniquely positioned here to fill in the gaps and you know, working with our partners to help you fill in the gaps in Microsoft's native security, kind of give you a belt and suspenders approach and fill in any of the gaps that they may have. That's really where we are here, and we work we you know, we work seamlessly with Office 365. So let me start going through some of the things I was talking about: the tech prevent or recover. So on the detection side, we have a number of tools that are here that are designed to detect threats that are already in your environment. We have the email threat scanner for Office 365, and this ex scans Exchange Online for existing threats. It goes through, looks through the email boxes, looks at attachments, runs as attachments against our advanced threat prevention, and identifies 
identifies emails that may have a malicious attachment. So we can catch ransomware malware that may already exist in your environment. This is a discovery tool. It's not a remediation tool. It's a discovery tool. So it's a cloud-based capability. It is free. Um, and you can work with our partner, and they can set you up with all the links and everything. So you can work with them and, and get it. But let me show you kind of what it does for you. So when you run the scan, it will actually give you a report of what you were seeing. You can then drill down to different levels of it, see what was going on, see what was, what was sent, and get an idea of the overall current posture you've got, what you have in your environment. So this is just a glimpse. This is just a glimpse of the output you can get. If you want to run a scan yourself, you know, we'll set you up with that after this. And you can see what it looks like. So our second piece is the email threat scanner for Exchange. Um, very closely related capability. They operate very differently, but provide the same end result. They let you see what exists in an on-prem Exchange server, whether it is a physical appliance where you've actually got iron on site, or, the, or whether you're running a virtualized either in like a VMware cluster locally or you're using the cloud. This is for specifically for Exchange. Rather than the scan being cloud-based, the scan runs on your local host and it leverages your Outlook 2013 or 2016. It can run with 2010. It's not officially supported, but it does work. Um, leverages that and lets you scan through the email boxes locally. And this isn't cloud-based. It does leverage our cloud service for advanced threat protection, but in of itself, it's not cloud-based. It runs on a local workstation. And it's really pretty cool. On the prevention side, Barracuda Essentials for Office 365 is what we're here to talk about. And this is a comprehensive set of tools, a collection of different components that work together to protect your Office and Office 365 environment. So the email security service, which is the basis of it, this is kind of the core service, gives you world-class spam filtering. This is what Barracuda got our start in, you know, our email secure email gateway, the spam firewall from back in the day, became the ESG and is now Essentials, is spam filtering at its finest, plus antivirus, anti-phishing capability. And one of the other things we add is the capability for link protection. Um, what this is, is the ability for us to we rewrite links in email because one of the things that we've seen happen is that there's a lot of, they call drive-bys, where you'll have uh, malware on a website. What scammers will do, attackers will do, is they will have something set up where they have a website, and the website may be a type of squatted domain, any, any number of different ways they're going to set this up. But what they have is they have malware there. And when you go to the site, you end up being infected. What link protection does is link protection will rewrite the link set it up so that if the link is bad, you'll get a security warning. And then we actually have the ability on the, on the site there to give you user training to actually help your users become part of the defense rather than part of the attack surface. It's actually a really cool feature. So we also have the ability to provide antivirus as part of that, anti-malware, you know, the standard, and it's, it's looking at, you know, we're looking at signatures, we're running antivirus, we're able to protect you from a broad range of virus and malware, including ransomware that we've seen. But on top of that, the next step is advanced threat protection. Um, ATP is our more extensive version. Um, what this is, is an additional capability, and it's multi-layered. So what it does it? It will examine a file. If we've seen the file, we haven't. You know, our, our regular defenses don't recognize it. We're now able to start running this file through multi-layered defenses that will protect you from zero-day threats. So if the file is malicious, never been seen before, we can still stop it. So it's a multi-layered defense. Starts out with 
um, some basic scanning to identify that if the file is benign, you can usually tell before you get very deep, the file is actually benign. Um, and then if we see it, we then now go to multiple AV engines. We now start doing heuristic and static analysis. We look at the file, we tear the file apart and say, how is this file written? What kind of uh, function calls is it leveraging? What's the file entropy? Are there any embedded links? What is it doing? What was it written to do? From there, we throw it into a sandbox. And the sandbox, there are many, many different ways to do sandboxes, and I'm not going to go into much depth on the sandboxing technology here. Um, we use the CPU emulation, which basically, rather than admitting that it's a sandbox and looking for behaviors associated with the sandbox, which is a perfectly valid way of doing it, um, we make it look like it's a real environment. So when the malware queries, it says, no, no, I'm a real environment. I'm actually running on a PC. Um, I'm a real, I have a user. That way we emulate it and we get a closer to reality result from the malware. And it's very, very effective. One of the things that's actually pretty cool about this is that the majority of malware is actually caught at the heuristic analysis level, which means the delay in delivery is very, very short generally under a minute. It's only when you have to go those, those about half a percent that we can't identify that we get to that point and say, yeah, we still don't know what this is and we're dropping the sandbox. Really only about a half a percent of the emails we see get that far. And those are the only ones that get a delay of more than a couple of minutes. One of the other things that's kind of cool about this is I'm not going to really go into much depth on our other security products, but the ATP capability is AI driven, machine learning. And one of the things that are really cool about machine learning is the more you can throw at it, the more quality data you can throw at it, the more effective it becomes. And one of the things that's a Barracuda advantage is we have a very broad range of security products that are actually all feeding into the same ATP engine. So they're all able to look at the files and identify them. So we start where we've got Email security gets it. Our web security gateways are getting it. Our next generation firewall is getting all of them leverage this capability. So the files we're seeing aren't just email attachments. There are a full range of files, different file types, different files, different kinds of attacks that all help the machine learning become more effective. And I kind of look at that here. So you've got all the different threat vectors. You're looking at the network, protecting the network, protecting email, protecting the web. We've got the web security gateway and the web application firewall, protect your application. Mobile users, we can protect them as well. And all of our different applications, our, our different security suite, parts of the security suite are coming in. The email security service, security gateway, the WSG, the next gen firewall, and the web application firewall all feed into this. And it runs through signature analysis, behavioral analysis, static, and finally CPU emulation. And the machine learning leverages all of these different levels. So it's very, very effective. And from in our world, the only people who really are seeing more data than we do are the likes of you know, Google and Microsoft. They're really the only ones who are actually able to see more data than we do. And on the final final piece here is backup, in case something does get through. And there's some things we can't stop. Um, again, I mentioned I was a pen tester. One of the techniques we would use was we would leave a media of some form around, be a, a floppy back in the day. Didn't get a lot of that, but still CDs, DVDs that we would burn, uh, thumb drives, still very popular to this day. And what we would do is we would have something on the thumb drive or on the DVD. And imagine, imagine if you would, a DVD that the handwritten label, you know, whoever the boss is, their CEO's uh, financials presentation at a conference they were just happened and the date, and you leave it somewhere, you know, it's a video and you leave it somewhere. Somebody is going to be interested and they're going to put that in their drive and they're going to watch a video and you're going to compromise their system. I know for a fact this can be done. Um, I'm not going to say where or when, but I know for a fact it can be done.
thumb drives, leaving thumb drives in the parking lot. A hint, if you ever find a thumb drive in the parking lot, don't just arbitrarily stick it in your machine because it may be bad. Um, there may be something on that drive that's going to compromise your system. So we have the cloud to cloud backup capability. You know, as I mentioned, you're probably never going to lose a file to a hardware failure on Microsoft, but cloud to cloud backup gives you the ability to have a secure offsite storage for both security purposes and for redundancy, which is something you can't really, you know, control. If somebody actually deletes a file, you're not going to recover it through Microsoft. It's a very simple interface to use, very easy to use lost data. It does require the administrator, but that's okay. Um, users aren't going to be, shouldn't be losing files and needing to recover them from backup that often. Um, but it's very easy to use and very complete. Um, Microsoft recently has put a lot of focus on their new Teams capability. And we're actually, we should have the ability to back up their new Teams stuff basically as soon as they are finished releasing all the APIs and finalizing everything to get that into the world, we'll actually be able to back up your team's information as well. So we'll be able to stay on top of it. And the final piece is cloud archiving service. Um, a lot of people don't consider archiving so much part of security, but they are actually really can be very, very important for legal and compliance reasons. If you're in any one of a number of industries, if you're in legal, medical, financial services, um, having archives can actually be vital I have for multiple legal reasons. And we actually have the cloud archiving service built into Essentials is a tool that actually gives you a true journaled archive. So journaling, you know, one of the things that's cool about journaling is it just ingoing and outgoing communica communications, all of it is stored. The entire thread is stored. So you can see the history of what was happening, how the communications went. Users can access this if they want to, to see what was in their archive. And it's easily searchable in the advanced search functions. If they're looking for an email from you know 18 months ago or something they've deleted from their inbox, it may still be in the archive if your archive, you know, if you've got it configured to keep two years of data, let's say. Um, it's fully recoverable, fully searchable, but they can't change anything the users can't actually alter the data that's in there. So to sum it up, okay, Microsoft does offer a lot of compelling reasons to go to Office 365, including some good basic security service, but it may not be enough, right? We complete the security picture. We're offering a full suite of email security tools that are gonna protect you and your users. We have email security, including the advanced threat protection capability. We have offsite backups that let you restore data that may have been lost or deleted maliciously or otherwise. And we have a secure cloud archive journaled that lets you meet legal and regulatory compliance. So from a resource standpoint, if you want to learn more about Essentials, you can of course go to our partner and work with them. Um, or you can take a look at the demo we've got here. I've got the login barracuda.marks.com. That will take you to let you see the demo. You can see uh, the Essentials product line. You can get more information on the product line. And then if you wanted to run a scan, you can run a scan. Or I would actually, in this case, I would say go with our partner and uh, let them work with you to get the scan set up so that they can, they can help you all through the process if you find, end up finding something in your environment. And I will say that I get I get notices when these scans get run um, on a couple of the products because they're my product. And it is fairly common to have, you know, some number of incidents where there is something has been found in the user's environment. And that's all I have. Uh, I'm going to go on here a little bit for uh, this one. Actually, I think... Really, these slides belong to you, Ryan. Um, so let me, I will hand this back over to Ryan. I will look at the questions. If you want me to click the next slide, Ryan, let me know. And uh, back to you. Great, thanks, Mike. I'll be sure to let you know when to uh, change the slides. Uh, so thanks for the presentation. Hopefully all of our attendees were able to get something out of it, um, regardless of where they're at with Office 365. 
Um, before we close things out, we just wanted to give a little bit of information about ourselves for those who may not be too familiar with who we are or what we do. So just in a nutshell, we are Outsource Solutions Group, and for the past 20 years, we have been servicing small and medium-sized businesses in the Chicagoland area uh, with regard to IT consulting, networking, and IT solutions. With a 98% customer retention rate, we really pride ourselves on our customer service and providing a personalized experience to each and every one of our customers. Uh, next slide, please, Mike. Uh, we also work with a variety of notable strategic partners, including but not limited to Barracuda, who uh, gave the presentation today, uh, Microsoft, WatchGuard, Cisco, etc. So if you're ever in need of any help with, uh, with any of these products or services from these partners, uh, we'd be happy to help you and see what kind of assistance we could provide for you. And then finally, the last slide, please, Mike. Um, obviously, we'd like to get in touch and work with every single one of you who attended if we're not already working with you. Uh, so an opportunity to the first five people who email me at info at osgusa.com. Uh, we would like to offer you a free security assessment. And from there, we can see if we can establish a relationship for uh, future work together, hopefully. Other than that, that is all I have. Uh, thank you for attending. And Jennifer and Mike, I don't know if you guys want to close this out, if any of you guys have anything left to say. I will, I will go ahead and close this out, Ryan. Um, Jennifer is, has departed and leaving me to, to shut things down. Thank you all for attending. Thank you for listening. Uh, this is being recorded. Ryan will be able to get you a copy of the recording if you want to listen to anything in case there's something you missed. Um, I don't see any questions here, so I'm going to go ahead. I will leave it go for another you know minute or so. Um, Guess, or unless until I see people, I'm already seeing a few people start to drop off. So I'm going to give it just a little bit longer here, and then I'm going to go ahead and close this out and let everybody get on with their day. Again, thank you for attending. Okay, not seeing any questions, so I'm going to go ahead and shut it off. Uh, take care, everyone.